Happy Wednesday floss tube. Hello crafty friends. My name is Caroline. Welcome back. Daily crafty chat. As you can see, I'm wearing my big snuggly shawl today. This was, this is the well mood shawl that I was telling you about yesterday. This is one of my friend Josh Mole's designs and um, I linked to her yesterday. I'll link to her again today. Um, and this is just one of my most favorite makes ever. Three different skeins of yarn. There are, there's a little bit of lace, there's a little bit of garter, there's a little bit of mosaic knitting in there, and it just repeats itself. So the three colors repeat themselves. So there's the, the lace and the garter and the lace and the garter stitches in between, and then you switch to the color, then you do some mosaic, and then more lace and garter, switching colors, and there, oops, there's the next mosaic section, and then there is a third mosaic section, but I think it is um, around the back of my neck, because it is, um, there are short rows in it, so it is wider in the middle and of course long and skinny on the ends. When I wear it, I love to wear it like this. I know um, I, I've, I, I've never been able, one to be able to wear a shawl where you know it, it just rests on your shoulders. It, it always feels very, um, I don't know, like it gets in the way and I wanna just take it off. Whereas if I just wrap it around my neck, this is how I put them on and then I put my coat on pretty much every day in the winter time and I'll just choose a different shawl, wrap it around my neck a few times and put the coat on and out I go. Then there are other shawls that I will wear. Um, I'll put them on, put my coat on and then bring the front part of the shawl out over the top so that then this is sort of like a decoration on top of the coat. Anyways, um, so yes. My, my Josh, my well mood shawl. Um, little update on my friend. She is in the hospital for the next three days. Um, she will be undergoing uh, some steroid treatment to help um, slow the deterioration in her eyes and in her brain. Josh has neurosarcoidosis and um, she's a dear friend and her medication has stopped working um, and so now they are sort of dealing with how to move forward. So if you would like to um, follow along with Josh's journey um, in her health and in her knitting and her knitwear design, I can't recommend her as a person highly enough. You can find her on Instagram at brightworkin and I will I will also leave her Instagram link down below. I thought about that yesterday. I thought I I tell I talk about Josh all the time and I, I show off her knitwear all the time and I'm always knitting a Josh pattern. Um, and I of course am making her quilt, but I, I don't I, I rarely shared her Instagram handle, which doesn't make much sense because that's really how I really got to know her um, originally after we met through the Fiber Friends and we followed each other on Instagram and started messaging back and forth and uh, became became quite close. So as you can see, I did what I said my task that I set out to finish today. Um, that's why I'm recording a little bit late today. It is 3 p.m. in the afternoon here in London, Ontario, Canada. And I completed, I've put all of my blocks, all of my remaining blocks have now been uh, strip pieced. So I've put that, um, I've put the, the, uh, the word, it's at the top of my tongue, sashing. I've put the sashing in between each of my blocks. I have the remaining four blocks are now strip pieced together. So my job for tomorrow, I don't have a lot of time tomorrow. And so this is why I knew that going into my week. I knew Thursday was going to be full. So I'm giving myself Thursday and Friday to finish putting this together with the rest of the sashing that goes in between the strips to put the rest of the quilt top together. So my goal is that by the end of Friday, the entire quilt top is done. And I would like to also have the backing and the batting prepared because Saturday is sandwich day. On Saturday, I plan to sandwich the quilt and 
hopefully begin the process of the quilting. I'm just doing very, very basic quilting on this. I am not a proficient quilter. I have only made two quilts my entire life. And uh, actually, no, that's a fib. Uh, let's just say two completed quilts. <laughs> two completed quilts. I have two other quilts that are underway that have been, they're pretty much UFOs and they're a story for another day. Not that I, I, I would like to finish them. It's not that I wouldn't like to finish them. It's just that, um, anyway. So I will share those quilts another day. Now that I seem to have my quilting mojo back and I'm, you know, I'm really enjoying this process. Now, maybe now is the time for me to, um, to dig those other two out of, uh, the the UFO pile and perhaps give them some attention because I was just thinking the other day that we could use a few more blankets downstairs uh, quilts that I can just chuck in the washing machine a couple of knit afghans now they are I knit them years ago they're acrylic yarn and they can go in the washer and dryer but the kids don't really like them because they're quite um, lacy and so the kids are always like oh my toes and my fingers always poke through these and you know I, I want a blanket that doesn't my fingers don't poke through you think, oh, could you complain about something sillier? <laughs> so anyways, I thought maybe a couple extra, you know, cozy quilts on the couches downstairs would be nice. And I certainly have enough scrap fabric around that I could put together some, um, some patchwork quilts very easily. So I have to admit, I've, I've been really enjoying this process of getting back into this. Um, it's been really fun. It's a different, it's a different type of sewing that I, than I, um, you know, I've made a few patchwork bags and I've done stuff like, I've done piecework before, but the quilting is not something that I do. And so to do something different with my sewing machine has been really, really fun. I've been really enjoying that. Very fun. Okay. So I have some things to show you today and it's not going to be my stitching today. So I'm taking a day off, even though I did do some stitching last night, I'm gonna save that until tomorrow to share with you um, so that maybe it will impress you just a little bit more with the amount of progress that I got done. So crinkle, crinkle. The first thing that I have to share with you is are a couple of ornaments that were made for me by my friend, Noelle. And, um, was here the other day um, and I was we I, I had something that I had to get to her and uh, she had a couple of sweet little gifts for me um, so we we exchanged present bags and uh, Noelle is a phenomenal knitter she is she's an incredible knitter so if you're also a knitter and you're looking for another really nice yarny knitting podcast you can find noelle along with her partner um kelly uh who is also a bag maker and they are out in sarnia ontario kelly's um, bag business is called the tangled stitch and um, you can find kelly and noelle on th uh, their podcast which is called knits and pieces noelle started this podcast with her daughter jacqueline um, but her daughter has become really busy and uh, was was unable to continue with the podcast so so kelly who is a good friend of noelle's stepped in and they've been uh, they've done a couple of episodes together. So Noelle brought me a couple of ornaments for the tree. And so I had to share these with you because they are adorable. So I'm going to show you the snowman first. Look at this little guy. So I believe this is called a uh, Moshi Moshi pattern snowman. And I think think it's a free pattern but I'm not sure if anyone out there recognizes this this is actually my second little Moshi Moshi that I've received I received one a number of years ago from a very lovely friend out in Germany um, her name is Verena and uh, Verena I also met through the Fiber Friends podcast and she knit us all all three girls um, a little Moshi Moshi snowman and so I now have two, but this one has a little hat with a pom-pom and you can see the yarn that Noel used for his sweater. 
Do you remember I've told you about Stellina yarn? Do you remember my Christmas socks had a little bit of sparkle, which was that gold Stellina? Well, I'm not sure you can see it, but there's a little bit of Stellina in the snowman sweater. So it's got just a little tiny bit of sparkle in it. It's so cute. It's so cute. I talk about Leo and Roxy all the time, um, yarn dyers, uh, and also the owners of the Little Red Mitten, the yarn shop in St. Thomas, Ontario. This yarn, um, oh, and they have a podcast as well. I finally caught an episode this morning. I had some, I had some time, um, and because I was doing, you know, fun sewing, not that my work sewing isn't fun sewing, but sewing where I could, you know, sort of relax a little bit this morning. Um, so I put their podcast on while I was, while I was putting together the strip pieces and it was very enjoyable. So, um, now do they call it the little red mitten podcast or is it Leo and Roxy? I'll have to look that up. I'll try and remember to link it down below. If I don't and I've forgotten, feel free to just tap me in the comments below and I'll do it. But this yarn, the gray and the green, can you see the gray is marled? It's marled with that gray and white. Well, Leo and Roxy, so the yarn dyers' names are Carrie and Jolyn. They did a yarn that they, they're, they're, they're the work sock yarns. And so it's like, you know, the ubiquitous work sock with the stripe in it. Well, they have sets that have green and pink. Oops, sorry about that. Uh, where was I? Right, uh, the work sock yarn. They have yarns that are just like, you know, like the sock monkey work sock yarns and you can buy them in sets. And so Noelle had some leftovers and she used that in the little, the little snowman. Okay, here's the other ornament. Are you ready for the cuteness of this? Because it's so cute. Look, <laughs> it's a little teeny tiny, perfect little, absolutely perfect sweater. And Noelle just uses, um, you know, she just knits it like a real sweater, just, just tiny. It's just tiny. And she uses little tiny bits of, of yarn leftovers. And so, um, you know, when you look on the inside, she's, she's got, you know, her ends are woven in beautifully and it's just, it's on this tiny little hanger and it is adorable. It is absolutely adorable. So that will be going on my Christmas tree this year. So what do you think? <laughs> Aren't those cute? Oh, adorable. Adorable. Okay. Um, so yeah, those were from Noelle. That's what I had to show you from Noelle. So I'm going to put those there beside me. Keep them safe. Um, before I move on to what else I have to show you today, I have a couple of hellos to, to send out into Flosstube land today. And these are to some, some children of Stitchers who watch. So the first hello that I would like to say is to Naomi. And Naomi, I just wanted to give you a wave and a hello and ask you how you're doing today, and I hope that you're well, and I hope that you're enjoying listening to my voice. Your mom says that you like to listen to my voice, and sometimes she says she has to play my episodes over and over again, and that you really like it. So, um, to, not, to Naomi's mom, I'm sorry. <laughs> but Naomi, I think it's really nice that you like to visit with me too. My other hello is to my little friends, Sam and Katie. And sorry, telephone call. Um, Sam and Katie. Sam, I wanted to tell you that I saw your stegosaurus. I saw that your mom had finished your stegosaurus pattern and I think it is fantastic. You must be so happy that your mom finished that for you. So I wanted to ask you, are you going to have her hang it up in your bedroom? Is it going to have a special place in your bedroom so that you can look at it every day? And Katie, are you still cross stitching? Your mom showed us a picture on the Facebook group that you were doing some cross stitching before. So I was wondering whether you were still working on it and if maybe you wanted to send me a picture and that I could put a picture on the TV of what you're stitching. I don't have to put a picture of you on the screen if you don't want that and if your mom doesn't want that, but I could show everybody what you're working on if you'd like that. 
So a big hello to Naomi and Sam and Katie, and I hope you guys are having a great day. Okay, so are you ready? I have been talking about this for a while, um, for the last few days, that I wanted to show you a very special package that I received in the mail. But before I show you that, I need to tell you something because, and, and it will all make sense in about 10 minutes. I received a second package in the mail yesterday from Mary Ellen. So I need to say this to Mary Ellen first and she will completely understand when I'm showing you the first package why I needed to say, Mary Ellen, <laughs> you're, gonna, you're gonna laugh. You're really gonna laugh. And let me tell you, we had some happy faces around here. So, last week, early last week, I received a package in the mail in my, in my, po in my post office box all the way from Australia. And first of all, I am in love with Australia. And I, I know I can tell from my YouTube, the YouTube um, creator studio, where I go in and do all the work with the, the video side of things here, you can, it, it gives you a whole pile of information on um, who's watching, not, not like your personal information, but demographics, countries, um, ages even, you can tell, you know, what, what ages, what, um, it, is it, uh, I think you know what I mean, right? Demographics, that's the word that I meant. So, um, I know that I have lots of viewers in Australia, which tick, which tickles me to no end because I have wanted to go there for so long. I, it's really one of those places that I, I know that I must go there one day. I'd love to go to Australia. I'd love to go to New Zealand. I would love to go to Tasmania. I would just, I, I just know that one day I will make it there. And part of the reason for my absolute delight in that little corner of the world is entirely because of the show Master Chef Australia. I can't explain it. John and I love that show. It's our favorite show. And we I'm often asked because I am in Canada, how can you watch Master Chef Australia? So I will say this, um, I don't know how I can watch Master Chef Australia. And that's all I can say. Um, but somehow it magically appears and it's our favorite show in the entire world and it takes us forever to watch it because we only watch it when we're together. <laughs> and a big part of the summer we are not together because I'm at the cottage and, and he's usually here or going back and forth working. And we don't tend to watch a lot of television at the cottage. So the season will come out early early spring even does it come out in February I think the the brand new season and then it will take us months to watch the whole thing and so of course um oh I just I just love that show we just we just absolutely love that show and so we love seeing the 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 scenery when they take the contestants to different places in the country and then they Oh, it's just, I just love it. Um, uh, one of my favorite things to get John every year for Christmas, and frankly, it is his favorite present, is every Christmas I go to the LCBO, which is, um, if you're if you're not from Canada, even if you're not from Ontario, most people in Canada know what the LCBO is, but in Ontario, that is our, um, that's where you go to buy most of your alcohol. So um, it's the Liquor Control Board of Ontario. Our alcohol, up until very recently, was very regulated by the government. And so <laughs> it's very, very Canadian to go to the beer store and that's what it's called, the beer store. And it's beer store, that's what it is. And it's, you know, it's brown and orange and everybody knows what the beer store <laughs> looks like. And when you're a kid, you love to go to the beer store with your dad when he takes back all the empties and he puts the empties on the, the, the wheelie trolley and then he rolls it into the thing. It's a whole thing. So kids, people in Ontario are probably laughing right now because the, you'll all have memories of going to the beer store. And I was always charmed by the, <laughs> the empties rolling into the, not, I mean, my dad, you know, 
he he didn't have like crates and crates and crates and crates of empties but you know what I mean you put the box on and you wheel it in and then you get a brand new box gets wheeled out back on the on the trolley out to you so it was always a lot of fun so we go to the beer store for beer and you go to the LCBO for hard spirits wine um, liqueurs things like that recently in the last couple of years um, they have started selling uh, well uh, not just recently but for for maybe even 10 15 years they've put little wine kiosks into the, some of the grocery stores and so there's a certain kind of wine that you can buy it's kind of like a little outlet within the grocery store so you can go there and you can buy there wine I think it's it's magnata that's the wine that's sold in the grocery stores around here um, but you can also buy craft beer now at the grocery store is it only Ontario craft beer I don't think so I think it's all craft beer isn't it I am NOT a beer drinker you can buy cider there too I am a cider drinker so I have bought cider at the grocery store before but normally when you're going for um, wine or um, things like gin spirits things like that you would go to the LCBO see how much you're learning today on daily crafty chat you're learning all about how we buy our alcohol here um, but John's favorite present at Christmas is I go to the LCBO and I choose four special bottles of Australian red wine because that's our favorite and I have to say that in kind of a quiet voice because here in Ontario we have a wonderful wonderful wine region in the Niagara region and that's actually where I grew up um, the Niagara wine region is renowned for its wine I like their whites so I like my white wine from Niagara but I like my reds from Australia I also like some California reds not gonna lie California has got some magnificent red wine you know I'm an equal opportunity red wine drinker if I really like it and doesn't matter where it's from but the Australian Reds have a special place in our hearts and so every Christmas that's a special thing that I buy for John and so I'm already looking forward to going and choosing out the, the bottles for this year so that was a really long-winded way of telling you that I am rather fond of Australia and one day we have to get there so I got a box in the mail and it was from Carrie um, and Carrie had sent me an email a while ago saying oh I have something for you I'd like to send it to you um, what's your address and so I gave her my address you're gonna hear some empty packages because there was chocolate in here was being the operative word so I opened up the box and on the top was this really cute little thread holder and it's a sheep I mean Carrie is also a knitter. She is a knitter and a cross-stitcher. And clearly a sewer as well. Because let me show you. There are there's so much there's so much in this box. There's so much so much in this box. Okay. So I'm going to show you the back first. Look at this. I actually started using this as soon as I pulled it out of the box because I've never had one of these before and I love it. I just love how she made it. This is, um, look at the beautiful fabric. Oh, I love that. Look at the little flag. And are you ready? I'm going to turn it around. Oh, so there's a piece of Velcro there. You can, you can put your chart in between here. Keep your chart in the back. But let me turn it around. Show you. Look at that. Look! It's a little floss organizer. So it's got the the felt on the inside and the vinyl she's sewn into little pockets and you can put your bobbins of floss in there now can you tell by looking at it which project I've been using this for I bet you can <laughs> there's the green there's the black my my 310 and my 798 isn't it pretty sure 797 excuse me this is of course Savon so I have been using this every single day since I got it. I love it, Carrie. It's really, really useful. Really like it. Love that. Uh, so I've been using that every day. Okay, so I'm gonna just lay it there so it's safe. So there was some chocolate in the box. There were some Tim Tams. These were really good. These were really good. I, I have heard people talk about Tim Tams before, but I'd never had one. 
not to my recollection I have ever had one and it was they it was delicious and then now I am a sucker for dairy milk I love dairy milk chocolate um, I'm more of a milk chocolate person than a dark chocolate person John is dark chocolate I'm milk all the way um, but I had never seen these before and they were absolutely both adorable and delicious they're koala caramel dairy milk look at those and they were in the shape of little koalas I know so I saved the packaging to show you oh there was a lavender sachet that Lavender is, lavender and vanilla are my two favorite scents. I just, I love it. So I'm wondering, Carrie, did this come from your garden? Because it is, it's wonderful. It's wonderful. I love that. So that's actually going to stay here in my, in my sewing room next to my sewing machine. I'm going to keep that in here. Okay, then, oh, I didn't show you a card. Let me show you the card because every detail of this gift. So there were dogs. Look at those puppies. They're so cute. And there was a koala stamp on the outside of the envelope. So, okay. I did want to read you just a little bit of, of her letter. So, I should have done this at the beginning, but in typical Caroline fashion, I'm just going roundabout. When we get to it, we get to it. Dear Caroline, thank you so much for all you do for both our stitching and knitting community. You are very welcome. Thank you. Your videos have gotten me through more than one long night of new motherhood, and now my son is so used to your voice, it sends him to sleep almost every nap time. Now, cute, right? And Carrie has put a picture on the Facebook group before of her son falling asleep. Apparently he wandered in while she was watching me and he fell asleep beside her. And it's just, it's so sweet. I have included some goodies for you and the family if you feel like sharing. Um, okay, so the wool is a local to me dyer that I love and thought you might like this colorway. Wool? Why, yes. There was a beautiful bit of wool in my gift box isn't look at this oh my gosh the color on this is phenomenal look and there's my favorite and all my other favorite and then all my favorites together in one skein oh look at this blue that is so pretty and that pink that's gorgeous so so this yarn is from a yarn company named Stitchcraft and Wizardry. There's the tag there. I think that's going to come up. There we go. And the yarn is called Meet the Stitch Crafts. And this was their Yarnia opening colorway. It's on the House Elf Liberty base of 85% um so let me see south s w e f merino south western e f i don't know what that stands for e f merino i'm sure it is something that i should know but i don't 15 percent nylon four ply 400 meters 100 grams and 80 meters 20 grams for the mini skeins that go with it. I am, um, I, I, I already would put, see, I don't know. Originally I thought I would definitely use the pink for heels and toes, but I actually think all three need to be incorporated into the sock. So stripe cuff, you know, like gray, 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 a little bit of pink, gray sock heel and toe that would be really oh it's just beautiful yarn Carrie I love it I love it thank you and I'm really really looking forward to knitting with it so this yarn is going to go into my special basket 
so that I can admire it and get ready to knit it. Um, okay, I'm gonna tell you about that in a minute because uh, there was some tea in here. Like, it looks like Carrie's a lot like me and she's a fan of tea. So she sent me a selection of some teas that she loves. I've tried a couple of these and I already, so I knew already that I already loved a couple of them, but a couple of them are brand new to me. I've never tried this blood orange one. I, I'm not even familiar with this. Uh, it's called Red Seal. This one was brand new to me. I've never seen that before. It looks delicious. I've never tried this Twinings um, black currant black tea. This one's brand new to me. And it looks, again, <laughs> delicious. Um, whoops. Couple of these Twinings I've tried and I, I love them. Ooh, chai pumpkin spice, that's brand new. I've never tried that. Uh, Twinings Nightly Calm. Oh, that looks good. I've never tried that either, and I love chamomile tea. It's a chamomile mix. Chamomile, spearmint, and lemongrass. Oh, pure chamomile and butter mint. Vanilla flavored peppermint tea. Oh, that sounds good. I've never tried that before. Look at that one. So, is it going to show up? Well, that looks good. Love, love tea. And Australian wooden animal ornaments. Look at, oh my gosh, six Australian animals. So of course we've got the koala, the kangaroo, and is that a hedgehog? That's gotta be a hedgehog, right? Oh, it's so cute. I know hard to focus on the shiny things there. there. Lovely. Okay, so um, I've saved this for last. Okay, so the last thing in this box of goodies was definitely, most definitely, tucked in there for Nicholas. And when I saw this, I was blown away that she had done this. And so was Nicholas because Carrie stitched a Ravens logo for Nicholas. And look at this, look at the extra beautiful fabric. Look at this, this is a hand dyed fabric that she's put this on. And oh, so if you don't remember the story, back in the summer, um, I mentioned that Nicholas was a Baltimore Ravens fan. We are not a football watching family. So the fact that my son has gotten into football um, has has created a bit of a learning curve for the adults in this household. John has done very well. I It's wonderful stitching time for me. Um, it also reminds me a lot of my childhood because my father watched a lot of sports when I was growing up and a lot of team sports. And so I have fond memories of, of you know, him cheering a team on while mom and I were in the house doing something else. But, you know, Look at that. Look what she stitched for Nicholas. So I was talking about how Nicholas had asked me to stitch some stitch a Ravens um, emblem for him. And I was, I was maybe moaning and groaning a little bit because I was busy and he kept asking me when I was going to do it. And uh, so Carrie helped me out. So Nicholas and I had a good chat about this and it is the perfect size. Um, and I have I have some fabric chosen already and I'll show you that in a minute um, But I'm going to turn this into a laptop sleeve for him and he is so excited So this is going to become a laptop sleeve which means that it will be used and loved for many years to come So Carrie, it's just it's amazing. Thank you. I Love it Okay, so remember I said that I got another package in the mail yesterday from Mary Ellen. I'm gonna show you first what Mary Ellen sent me and then I'm gonna read you her note because I think you're gonna laugh. Have you guessed already what Mary Ellen sent me? <laughs> Look at this. 
You guys, Nicholas just about lost his mind because not only does he now have is he going to have a laptop sleeve with an emblem but Mary Ellen stitched a huge version of his emblem and now I get to turn this into a pillow just like Miss Patty's giant pillows isn't that amazing look at what Mary Ellen did look at all of that work that went into that you guys I I'm I opened it up and I was literally speechless. Mary Ellen, I can't believe that you you did this for us. I'm just so tickled and so touched. Okay, I, I have to read you her note because it really, it really, it, it means a lot to me. So I want you to hear her note too. So Caroline, as a former bassoonist, my son plays the bassoon, so that's, why there's a connection there. I'm always interested in hearing about your son. I too am a Ravens fan, so I was doubly pleased to hear that he's a Ravens fan. When you reminded us about the big mitten pillow, I knew that Nicholas needed a Ravens pillow. I also knew you were really busy. <laughs> I had the pattern and the time, so here it is. Thanks for getting us through a hard summer. Mary Ellen. You guys, so Mary Ellen, I can't tell you, Nicholas almost lost his mind. It was so funny. It was so funny. He just couldn't believe it. He couldn't believe that someone would stitch this for him, someone who didn't know him, and someone would, would be so thoughtful to, send, to, to do this and to send it. So I wanted to show you. I have, um, I have some flannel fabric. So you guys tell me what you think. I have this fabric oh it's showing up blue this is actually purple and so I'm thinking that I'm going to use this flannel fabric to make like a cozy snuggle pillow so that he can keep it on the couch downstairs and when he's watching football he can he can have this to uh, to lay on and snuggle and cheer on his team isn't that great look at that Mary Ellen, it's phenomenal, just phenomenal. Let me see if I can get the color of this to show up a bit better, because it is, it's completely washing out. This is, no, you can't really see the color in here today. It's very, very gray. It's rainy and gray and gross outside. All of my nice snow has all disappeared. It's very sad, but it'll snow again. It's Canada. <laughs> Christmas time. Snow, more snow is coming. You just don't know when. Um, so yeah, this is a, a beautiful cozy flannel that I've had in my stash forever. And I just think that it is going to be the perfect match for this. So these are, these two things are next on my list. Um, after Josh's quilt is complete. And so what I would like to do is maybe even feels a bit cheeky to wrap them up for Christmas, doesn't it? Because they weren't really entirely for me, but making them into something is kind of for me. But I liked him to have them before Christmas, so we'll see how quickly I can get, get that done. Okay, so um, that is it. I, I have more things to tell you and more things to show you, but I am, I am out of time and I'm already, I'm sure, well into 45 an hour I don't even know we'll see when I get to editing this this video to cobble it together um, but it is now uh, 340 and Luna is ready to go OUT and uh, that's it for me today so um, thank you thank you thank you thank you for all of your amazingly kind and funny heartfelt comments to me on the channel um, and emails and, and, and everything like that. I laughed so hard yesterday at your reaction to the green yarn because <laughs> I know, who am I? Green yarn. It is so unlike me to choose that color and I can't tell you why, but I'm so drawn to it. It's just so beautiful. Um, and I just think it's going to make a gorgeous shawl and I'm excited to start knitting that. I don't think I'm going to be able to wait 
much longer before casting that on. But I figure I'm trading one project for another because I'm frogging the other Caroline shawl. So it doesn't actually count as a new start. It's a restart. So technically, I could cast it on tonight if I wanted to. Hmm. We'll see. I don't know that I have time tonight. But it's, uh, it's tempting. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Ah, oh, the the call of a new project, restart the new a restart project. Anyways, I I should go. Um, I need to uh, I need to do a few more chores today before before my day is done, and uh, and get this video up. So I will see you tomorrow. Tomorrow is going to be a short video. Tomorrow I just have a couple of things that I want to share. Um, Friday I'm going to talk about the giveaways. So Friday I'm going to try and wrap up a few giveaways that I still have outstanding and talk a little bit more about uh, plans for Flossmas, plans for some auctions that I'm going to do during Flossmas. Um, as you may know, Michelle Bendy is not doing auctions at the moment. She's taking a break from auctions. Uh, she was an integral part last year of raising money um, for f helping me raise money for Muscular Dystrophy Canada last year during the month of December for Flossmas. I have decided, um, and I did discuss this with, with Patty, Four Boys and a Newfoundland Girl yesterday. I've decided to stick with the same charity this year, Muscular Dystrophy Canada, um, but my fundraising efforts are going to be much, much more subdued this year. I think everybody's had a tough year and I don't want to be overly, um, ag not that I was aggressive last year, I think aggressive is the wrong word, but I think everybody could use a quiet year. And um, you know, if, if you have a dollar to spare, that's great. If you would like to bid on an auction item, that's great. If you'd like to buy a Flossmas pattern, um, you know, um, there will be a, a bit of money there going towards Muscular Dystrophy Canada. But, um, it, it will be sort of a, a partial focus of the month and mostly just, you know, trying to be calm and, and have, bring a bit of peace to the end of the year. Uh, but I do have some truly exceptional, very generous items, um, a couple of really special things that I'm going to have up for auction in the month of December with 100% of the proceeds um, that are going to be directly donated to Muscular Dystrophy Canada through you, um, should you choose to participate in in these auctions. And I think that what I'm going to do is I'm just going to I'm just going to do what Michelle does and run it on my Instagram page. Um, so I'll have more information about that as we go. But again, we'll try and keep it a little bit informal um, and maybe a little bit of fun. So, okay, that really is it this time. <laughs> I really am done now. I'm sure I could think of 10 more things, but I'll try and save them until tomorrow. So I hope you're well, I hope you're safe, I hope you're happy, and I hope you have some crafting time tonight. And I'll see you tomorrow. So take care, everybody. Have a great night, and happy stitching. <laughs>